Welcome back, YouTube. Today, we welcome Zach Shulman to the channel. Zach is a second year medical student at the Case Western Reserve University School of Medicine. He did his bachelor, his bachelor of science in neuroscience at Colorado College with a minor in molecular biology and biochemistry. Zach also loves exploring medical adjacent innovative pathways. He's the VP of community at MD Plus, a huge community of people who are interested in medicine and beyond. We're gonna have a lot of cool questions to ask Zach today. We're super grateful to have him on our channel. How are you doing, Zach? I'm great, I'm, I'm really excited to be chatting with you, Kevin. Awesome, well, thank you for coming on. We're so excited to have you. I wanted to ask, where are you right now? Are you at Case Western? I am at Case Western. Uh, this is what we call the, the HEC. It's the health education campus. Every uh, medical graduate pro program is housed under here. Uh, we're one of the first classes to uh, spend our entire four years housed in this building. Very, very cool. And have you done your step one yet? Or are you studying for that right now? No, this is actually a, a nice break uh, okay. from my step one study. <laughs> so yeah, thank you for coming on. I know it must be stressful. You got your step one coming up. And how, how are you liking Case Western now that you're in second year? How was first year and how's the transition like? Uh, I think that it's it's been really a fantastic place. Uh, to get my, my preclinical training so far. You know, if I had to point to one thing that I really have appreciated about the school is its culture. It's a very healthy culture, uh, genuine collaboration, uh, people genuinely wanting to help one another, not just create the illusion that they want to help each other. Uh, it's all pass fail. Uh, there's no internal rankings whatsoever, uh, no court tiles or anything like that. So it's it's very, very collaborative. And what made you choose Case Western? I imagine you applied a bunch of places and you chose this school in particular. I know it has like an innovation angle. Was that something that factored in? It, it definitely factored in. I had gotten into some other schools. I'm originally from New York. I was living in New York City. This was my second cycle applying. The first cycle, I had a bunch of interviews and, and none of them landed. Um, and this cycle, the second one, I had got in a, a couple of different schools and I boiled the decision down to either Case Western or uh, n no medical school at all. And that's because I just got a really good impression from the school. I was excited to just brush up with like-minded peers and that it seemed like this was the place to do that. Well, let's start at the very beginning. Is there a reason that you applied to medical school? Like, what made you want to come here? What was the deciding factor? As I got more and more interested in, you know, uh, or I, rather I developed my own interests, it became more and more clear to me that I was actually really well suited for a career in medicine. Um, so I entered Colorado College, pretty sure that I was going to study neuroscience. It just seemed like such an exciting thing, but I really was interested in it from a more philosophical perspective at first. And then as time went on, I was, I slowly but surely gravitated towards more of the clinical side of it. And it wasn't until later into college that I realized that uh, actually I was going to apply to medical school. Right, so you graduate college, you come out of Colorado uh, College, and then you spend, you said a few years in New York City, some as a researcher at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai, and then with a consulting firm. Was it a life science consulting firm? It was, yeah. So that, that consulting firm is called ZS, and that was life sciences. So working with a lot of different pharmaceutical companies primarily, mm -hmm helping them uh, assess all different sorts of questions. So that, that was a really cool, like kind of 30,000 foot view of, of healthcare and medicine, uh, aside that a lot of, a lot of clini clinicians never really get exposed to. I think that it was actually really reassuring to me. So those years cemented the idea you wanted to go into medicine after college? Yeah, I, I would say that they cemented the idea. There was always a little bit of doubt. I think that a, you know, a lot of people go into medical school really convinced for, for a good reason, right? You, yeah. you should be convinced. I haven't experienced much doubt about my decision since. You know, my dad had a very different path. He was, uh, I think in second grade when he decided he wanted to be a doctor. So I, I kind of said to myself, well, I'm gonna do this, but I'm gonna figure out how to do it in a way that's really interesting to me. Certainly. So yeah, that's awesome. We got, we got so much to talk about uh, with regards to that. Now, Zach, really quickly, just for our pre-med audience, can you go over your application cycle, when you took your MCAT, when you got your interview, how your interviews went, and also, you know, those, those situational judgment tests, Casper, AMC preview, if you took them. Yeah, so I took my MCAT 
while I was doing research at Mount Sinai. I was supposed to take it in April of 2020. We all know uh, what was going on around that time. So it, my test got pushed back a month and I wound up taking it in May of 2020, two years before I matriculated. I studied for about four or five months while working full time. So that's that year. And then the following year, I think I had five interviews. I think the latest, the latest invitation I got was in February for an interview. If there was one lesson that I took away from that, that experience is that I think you should be really flattered if you get an interview, even more so an, an acceptance from a school. But if you get rejected, it means next to nothing. There is a lot of randomness in the process. If you get accepted, it means that someone has acknowledged you and your potential. If you get rejected, it does not mean that that potential is not there. It, it could mean any number of things. It's not even worth considering. Now, Zach, so now you got in, what would you say has been your favorite part about Case Western? I know you said it's, it's very supportive. If someone's deciding right now, you know, they got into Case Western or they're interviewing, what would you tell them? There's, there's a lot that's cool about Case Western. I think a lot of people have a hard time getting over the fact that it's in Cleveland. But I say this as, a, as part, partially as a joke, but partially serious. Uh, it's very easy to focus. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone who comes here is here to focus. P people mean business and it's awesome. But on the other hand, they're not competing with one another. It's, there's a lot of people just trying to kind of prove themselves. Uh, so that's awesome. And you know, the fact that there's four clinical systems with us being really the only medical school in the area, uh, that, that lends to a lot of cool opportunities. Right. It kind of reminds me of here in Rochester, Minnesota, where I'm at. I mean, I come home and all I do is focus. I mean, you see this gym in the back, just <laughs> focus and work out. <laughs> <laughs> so when I think of biotech innovation, medical devices, pharma, I think of Boston, I think of New York, and I think of perhaps uh, Silicon Valley. So yeah, you're very far, but yet you're, you're involved in these communities. I saw MD Plus, can you tell us a bit about that? Uh, along with, I thought I saw a fellow at a company, it was like a health tech company. Yeah, that, that's called, it's called XPC, uh, X equals primary care. Yeah, uh, I'm ha happy to talk about both of these organizations. MD Plus is an organization for medical students who are interested in exploring opportunities beyond the clinic. So a lot of students are, are, are attracted to it because they've heard about something that sounds really cool or they're fully convinced that they don't want to go to residency, they want to go into industry. Or What's unique about it is that it is for medical students. There's other communities that are adjacent to it. Uh, Health Tech Nerds is one that comes to mind that's incredibly prolific and, and popular, but it, it doesn't cater towards medical students. Right on, and how about XBC? So XBC uh, is a very cool, uh, I would say, up and coming organization. And th what the organization does is basically helps clinicians, providers of any sort, understand the innovation landscape uh, and the role that they could potentially have in it. They're still kind of figuring out how they can be most valuable. But for the last six months or so, I've been in this fellowship with them where they've been helping me uh, launch uh, a startup that uh, me and two of my friends have been working on here. We have been making some really cool progress. It's been an interesting way of learning about the healthcare system and, mm -hmm. and how it deals with changes. Uh, but essentially, it's a health literacy startup. Uh, we think that there are much better ways to be educating patients, to bring them, to, to make them experts on their condition faster. Uh, the problem is that not every patient wants to be an expert or, or cares yep. to learn about their condition, but there's, there's plenty of people who want to learn and they want to become an expert so that they can make the best decisions for themselves. Mm -hmm. And so we are starting to work with some systems here uh, to, to pilot uh, the app, uh, get it into the hands of patients, hopefully help them become experts faster.
Now I want to explore more in terms of your future. Do you see yourself doing residency? Uh, I know there's other paths some people consider like bridge to Bain. Uh, if these are the big three consulting firms. Yeah, yeah if, I, have no, I have no interest in going back into consulting. I fully plan on going to residency. I think, like I said, I, I want to be a clinician. I, I want to have the skills of a clinician. I want to be able to practice like a clinician. Certainly. Let's end this off with, if you were a pre-med, you know, knowing what you know now after two cycles, what would be some, you know, tips that you wish you would have known or ideas you wish you would have had in your brain? I would imagine that a lot of the pre-meds who are listening to this podcast are pretty ambitious mm -hmm. and may, dare I say anxious to get into medical school. That's great, right? And if you think you need to get into medical school right away, by all means, go ahead. Do what you need to do to get in right away. To be completely honest, I hope, you know, and if my classmates are listening to this, I'm sorry. I think there is a difference between the students who have taken some time, weighed their options, explored other things, come in with some, some different perspective compared to those who just decided medicine and then put their heads down and did it. Uh, and I think that it, it, it manifests in a couple of different ways. Um, you can see it in just how people study too, uh, in addition to like the things that they take on outside of school. Um, mm -hmm. I think that the, the students who come in uh, without taking any gap years, uh, they, they, they're very good at, at checking boxes. They're very, very good at it. And that works, right? It definitely works. And it, it could it could very well get you where you want to go. Um, but my personal preference is to to take the the path that I'm more suited for. Mm -hmm. um, to be more honest with myself or, or to to give myself the opportunity to actually figure out where where I want to go, not just not just put my my head down and go. So that's it, everyone. Please give a big thank you to Zach for all the time he spent and for sharing his journey in medicine and beyond with us. If you want to follow Zach, here are his handles. You can find him on X and on LinkedIn. If you have any questions for him, you can check him out there. Also, links will be in the bio. Other than that, make sure to like, leave a comment on what you thought, and make sure to subscribe so you'll be notified for the next video. And take care.